Hey everybody, Mr. Grove here. Uh, today we're going to talk about the phylum mollusca. And uh, probably the first thing you need to know is there are a lot of them. So well over 100,000 species uh, worldwide. And um, that's more than our previous four phylum combined. Um, so a lot of mollusks, they're very versatile. Uh, there's some terrestrial mollusks, and you're familiar with those, snails and slugs. Uh, there's freshwater mollusks that are um, going to be snails uh, that live in ponds and streams and things. And then a lot of saltwater mollusks as well. And so there are three major classes um, within the phylum. And that's the gastropods, the bivalves, and the cephalopods. And so uh, those three classes we'll talk about in just a little bit. But uh, first, let's start with some overarching characteristics of mollusks. Um, we still have our one-way digestive tract uh, that we started with nematodes. And this is going to be um, where we have one mouth and then a di one-way digestive. And then um, an anus that will uh, expel the waste. Um, and so that's going to continue on. Uh, we started with nematodes without the roundworms. And that's going to continue on throughout the, this digestive tract. Uh, but the thing that is new with mollusks is going to be the fact that they have a full coelom. Uh, and so our flatworms, they were acoelomates, and then our roundworms were pseudocoelomates. So they had kind of a fake coelom. But this is the full coelom um, that they would have, and so they're going to be um, going to have a full coelom uh, in that. Okay, and we'll kind of talk about that a little bit more later. So... Um, our three classes, like we said, the cephalopods, so that's going to be our nautilus, octopus, squid, and kettlefish. Uh, our gastropods are going to be our snails and slugs and nudibranchs. And then our bivalves, so that's going to be our clams and oysters, mussels, uh, and scallops. So some key characteristics. Um, the body cavity is going to be, uh, like we said, they get a true coelom around the heart, and we'll show you a little diagram that uh, has that a little bit later. Um, Body symmetry, we are now bilateral, so we've been bilateral with the worms. Uh, and we'll stay bilateral pretty much through the animal kingdom with a little throwback to radial back in the echinoder echinoderms when we get there. Um, the three-part body plan is going to be visceral mass, the mantle, and the foot. So the foot's what you'd expect. Um, this big muscular um, organ that allows for locomotion. Uh, then the mantle is going to be represented by this little blue line here. And that's going to basically be what creates the shell. Uh, and then everything else would be the visceral mass. And so that's where the organs and the systems are. Uh, and pretty much all mollusks have some sort of version of that. Uh, and so um, we also have organ systems. Um, so we'll talk about those in a little bit. The excretory, circulatory, respiratory, digestion, and things. Uh, we. Uh, most mollusks are going to have shells, either one or two shells. Um, and another kind of special feature is the radula. So uh, radula is going to be this uh, tongue that has these little raspy files on, on the tongue. And that's good for these herbivore mollusks that allow, um, and it allows them to scrape algae and plant-like material off of rocks and surfaces. Um, some of the systems, so excretory system, uh, the coelom is around the heart, and so when the blood goes through that, um, the, there's a little side shoot off of that called the nephridia, and so here's a little blow-up version of that, and so that will help take that fluid that's in the coelom and filter out any useful particles, any nutrients, any proteins, things that the, the mollusk has used, uh, and before it gets dispelled as a waste, it allows it to kind of utilize that. Um, what's kind of interesting then is this is acts like a kidney kind of thing and our kidneys have our kidneys have things called nephrons and so we're starting to use the same terminology as what our own systems will use uh, another thing is the circulatory system uh, and so mollusks have an open circulatory system so that means the heart is going to just basically bathe this internal visceral mass with a blood-like substance um, and that's somewhat efficient but not terrible efficient because you don't know if it's picked up oxygen or not. And so you could be bathing uh, the organs with blood that is unoxygenated. So mollusks typically are not what we would think of as the most active, um, you know, kind of that snail's pace. 
um, especially the ones with an open circulatory system. But interestingly enough, there are some mollusks, the cephalopods, that have a closed circulatory system, and that's why they can do a lot cooler things. Um, and they can have a lot more stamina, a lot more speed, uh, a lot more power, because that closed circulatory system um, ensures that all the muscles are getting oxygen. Um, respiratory, so if you're a water mollusk, you're gonna respire with your gills. Um, and if you're a land mollusk, you've got this primitive lung structure, okay? The thing is, it's gotta stay moist. Um, and so that's why you're not gonna see a slug going across the sidewalk in the middle of July. Um, you know, he might be under a leaf litter or under a rock or uh, when it's cool and moist. Um, and so they have to stay moist on that. Um, and so that's the respiratory system. Uh, and then reproduction, most are going to be classic male or female, but there will be some ga uh, gastropods that can be hermaphroditic. Uh, some oysters uh, and bivalves can actually change gender. And um, regardless, the mollusk, uh, when it forms a larval stage, that's going to be what's called a trochophore. So that fertilized egg will form into a larval trochophore and then form into the adult mollusk. So let's start with the gastropods. So gastropods are typically our snails and slugs. Um, mostly marine, but there are so many mollusks, you're going to see um, a lot of terrestrial ones as well. Um, and then they typically have one shell, um, with the exception of like the slugs and the uh, nudibranchs. Uh, and so um, the word gastropod, gastro means kind of slimy. So if you think of your stomach uh, lining, having that kind of mucus lining, uh, and then pod is foot. So it's kind of mucus foot is what that word means. Uh, and so typically then they will secrete a mucus to just kind of glide along. Uh, and so you've seen that with snails, they kind of leave that film then. Um, another thing about them and SpongeBob's buddy Gary is anatomically correct here, the, ten the eyeballs are on the tentacles. Um, and so that is going to be um, common with the gastropods. So that eyeball will be on the end of the tentacles. A lot are herbivores, uh, and that radula will scrape um, algae and plant material off of surfaces, but there are quite a few predator gastropods as well. So like a giant horse conch would be a predator um, as well. So that is the gastropods. Uh, the nudiobranch is kind of an interesting gastropod. Uh, so this would be an example of a nudiobranch. Um, they will uh, have the ability to kind of munch on jellyfish, and rather than the stinging cells and the toxins hurting them, they actually store them, and that allows them a little bit of a defense mechanism against other things that might be trying to be a predator against the nudibranchs. So those are the gastropods. Uh, bivalves are gonna be bi and valves, so two shells. Uh, and so this is your clams, oysters, mussels, scallops are kind of common bivalves. And so those can be freshwater um, as well as saltwater. Um, and so they all have a two-part uh, shell, so that's hinged and connected uh, with the adductor muscles. Um, and those are really strong muscles that help keep that shell closed. Um, most bivalves are sessile uh, somewhat. Um, the, you know, if you're a, a mussel or a clam, you'll kind of bury into the sea or into the sand. But you can move around just a little bit. <coughs> but... Um, uh, scallops are actually quite mobile, uh, so they will use their siphons uh, to have an excurrent um, that can actually cause them to swim. Um, another thing with bivalves is they are, um, most of them are going to be male or female, but again, there are those exceptions to the rules there. Um, and they are going to be filter feeders, so that incurrent siphon brings water in, and then that filters any food particles out, um, and then the excurrent will cause that water to go out. And so any food particles are kind of trapped on the gills and then can be used. That's not a lot of food. Um, and so these guys aren't really all that active and uh, they just kind of have that chill lifestyle and can grow you know, to be 100 plus years, uh, some of the larger bivalves. Uh, no distinct head or radula. Um, so again, they're filter feeders and you know, when you look at a scallop or something, you're not gonna see a distinct head region. Um, and then some will can use the mantle to kind of make this mother of pearl sheen, and that will kind of go around uh, maybe an imperfection or a little tiny rock or pebble or a piece of dirt, 
and then they just keep going around and around and around that rock and that's what causes what we would call a pearl um, and so those are some bivalves um, so we've got um, mussels um, which are common freshwater um, types of things uh, you know you can eat those uh, clams and specifically the giant clam um, those are um, can be you know four or five hundred pounds um, and can be 100 plus years old. Um, they actually symbiotically live with some algae, and so th there's not enough f food in the filtering process, and so the algae helps keep them alive. Uh, the problem is overfishing kind of takes some of them out. They can't really get away, um, and so that's the giant clams. One of the problem um, bivalves is this guy here, and these are the zebra mussels. Um, and these guys are an invasive species in the Illinois River waterway, so in the Ohio River, the Illinois River, the Mississippi River, and they are just everywhere. Um, and so they will just completely cover up a bottle or a can or something, and so that is going to be the bivalves. And then lastly, we have the cephalopods, and so the cephalopods are going to be the squid, the octopus, the cuttlefish, and the nautilus. Um, and so the cephalopods are going to be um, having a distinct head region. So if you remember, that's what cephalization means. And technically the name is head foot. So the head is kind of right here by where the feet would be. Um, and these guys are really smart. Um, they have that closed circulatory system. They got a complex nervous system. So they can do some cool things. Uh, none of them really have an external shell except for this guy. The Nautilus has one. Um, the beak is kind of the modified shell part uh, that you'd see on the squid or the kettlefish or the octopus. Uh, they're all predators. Um, they can use that excurrent siphon to propel water and kind of move along as kind of a jet propulsion. Uh, they also have ink uh, that can be produced for an escape. Um, the giant squid is the largest invertebrate that we know of on Earth. And those things can get you know 50 to 60 feet long. Uh, and they actually have the largest eyeball uh, in the animal kingdom, kind of a fun fact. So um, those are the cephalopods, uh, really cool things, uh, lots of great camouflage, um, cuttlefish, octopus, you know, just phenomenal camouflage. But they're predators, they're smart, um, and they can um, be really effective uh, in hunting prey. So. Those are the mollusks, and I hope that was helpful.